Hello and welcome to Stream It. This is the film and TV podcast full of things for you to watch. And in today's episode, the Stream It supercomputer has conjured up another tricky question for us to solve. And that is, what is the best Shrek film? Oh yes, hello and welcome to Stream It, the ultimate film and TV podcast. This is the place where you can find all the best things to watch. And also, we give you our top five recommendations for this week coming up a bit later on. But before we do any of that, you might remember last week, the Streamer supercomputer made a little appearance. Do you remember that, Connor? It did indeed, yeah. It wanted us to choose the best movie musical from Encanto, Frozen and Matilda the Musical, which is a tough one to answer. It was very tough, but we did come to a conclusion, but I won't spoil it for you. You can have a little listen to last week's episode to see who we crowned our winner. But this week, oh, we've been set another challenge. We have, and it's an, oh, this is so, so tough. This week... Does not compete. Does not compete. We have to decide which Shrek film is the best. I'm excited for this one because I'm a huge Shrek fan, you know. Oh, so am I. Right, should we do this? Yeah, let's do this then. Okay, so we have to talk about the first Shrek film, obviously. Yeah, I think... See, already I straight away go to the first Shrek because it's always hard to have a better film in, like, a set of films than the first one. Yeah, I agree. And I remember when I first um, heard Shrek's voice, because he's Scottish, isn't he? He and is, was, yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. There's an actual cartoon with a Scottish character. It was well cool. Would you say that Shrek sounded like your granddad? Uh, yeah, yeah, probably, actually. And you know what? I used to do this thing, actually, when I went on holiday. Um, and I used to do an a, a impression of Shrek when he was talking to Donkey. And uh, everyone loved it when I was on holiday because they had never really heard a Scottish accent. Great. Oh, I bet you loved seeing the first one. I did too. And I think that's why oh, it's so hard. I, I feel like I can't say it too early, but that first Shrek film just stands out to me because obviously it was the part as well where we met all the characters. It was our first introduction to Donkey. Oh, like, do you remember when he found him as well in that forest when they was like, it was all different animals there? Do you remember? Oh, yeah, I do. And it, like all the um, fairy... What would you call them? Fairyland creatures? No, fairy tale creatures. That's what it would be, isn't it? Fairy tale creatures sounds good. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. I think that, yeah, I think Shrek won. Also, as well, when he had the babies as well, was that the last one? Was that Shrek 5? 5? Was it 5? I think there's only, oh no, I think you're right, you know. There yeah. was 4, wasn't there? Four was it four five? Yeah, wow, yeah. Shrek Forever After, that was it. Shrek Forever After, so good. I do think for me though, if I was to pick one of my favourite, it's got to be number one. It's, I'd go as far to say it's maybe one of my favourite films of all time as well. That first Shrek, I mean, what a good experience it was when we first saw it. I remember being in the cinema like, this is amazing. Yeah, to be fair, it did actually win the Academy Award, didn't it? The Oscar for Best Animated Feature. That was 2001. That was a very long time ago. 2001. So how many years ago was that? I'm going to do some maths here. Um, 22? Yeah, well done. <laughs> that was quick. Wow. I, I mean, it was always going to win awards, though, wasn't it? Shrek Fiona. Donkey! Look, here comes Sleeping Beauty. Oh. I hate these ball shows. Flip over the wheel of torture. You are cordially wow. invited. Dinner is served. Everybody dig in. Don't mind if I do, Lillian. <laughs> to meet the family. It's easy to see where Fiona gets her good looks from. <laughs> Make new friends. <laughs> Pray for mercy from... Puss. In bullets. If we need an expert on licking ourselves, we'll give you a call. Well, Shrek 2 done really well as well. It had 89% Rotten Tomatoes. That was in 2004. Yeah, I actually really liked Shrek 2. I think that was actually my favourite, you know. I don't think Shrek 1 was... I mean, it was great because it introduced us, but I think that, um, yeah, Shrek 2 actually caught me by surprise. Do you know the thing for the Shrek films for me as well that just stood out was the song choice of all of the film? Like, all the songs that they used throughout the films were so great. Yeah, they were iconic, weren't they? For they sure. Were so, so iconic. Oh, yeah, Shrek 2, 2004. I can't believe we've had so many Shreks, by the way. As I'm just thinking about it, we have had unlimited Shrek for so long. 
Yeah, Shrek 2 was the best though, because that's when Puss in Boots came in. Do you remember? Donkey Psychic. Oh, yeah, Donkey Psychic. Yes. Oh, Puss in Boots. So good. He was like the cutest cat. Do you remember the scene where he done the cute cat eyes and you're like, oh, I hadn't really seen that side to him before? Yeah. He held his little hat. He done the little cute cat eyes. And I was like, before that, he was this really cool, like sword using Puss in Boots. <laughs> Puss in Boots. I love it. And then, of course, the uh, third trick was the one that um, at the end, actually, that they had the triplets. That's when they had the, the, the kids. The kids? Yeah, it, Over- no, it was actually Shrek. Shrek the third was when Fiona revealed that she was pregnant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then at the end, they had them, didn't they? Yeah. Um, so I, I think, I, okay, I think this might be easier, Connor. I think we rate them from least favourite to favourite. I think that's going to be easier. Okay, least favourite to favourite. I would probably say the my. I'll go, okay, I'll go first. My number one is Shrek. Okay. My number two is Shrek two. Okay. Actually, it's in order. Shrek the third and then Shrek forever after. Okay. No, mine's so different, you know. What are you going for? So I think that uh, Shrek the third is my least favourite. Okay. And then I think it is Shrek forever after. Yeah. And then second, I think, is Shrek. And first, I think, is Shrek 2. Yeah, Shrek 2. It was very good, wasn't it? It was very, very good. What did you love about it then that put it above original Shrek for you? I think, you know, like um, in the first one, obviously it was great because you actually got to know like uh, Shrek and Donkey and things like that. But the second one, I feel like it was a lot funnier because they had the like Shrek and Donkey like drank the potion, do you remember? And then they turned into something completely different where Shrek was a human and Donkey was a horse. And I just thought it was, um, I don't know, a lot more fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I guess as well, It's it says a lot about, you know, the Shrek world. If they can actually make an amazing first film and then an even better second, it just reminds you just how good Shrek was. And I have to say, before we wrap up our Shrek chat, do you remember how incredible it was when Donkey had babies with the dragon and they had the cute little donkey heads, <laughs> but they were flying with dragon wings? I was like, this is ultimate Shrek. I love it. That'll do, Donkey. That'll do. That'll, you, oh my god, you sound like Shrek. Make it a little <laughs> bit more husky for me. Go on. That'll do, Donkey. That'll do. Yeah, you look like <laughs> Shrek too. Oh, thanks for that, Connor. No worries. <laughs> Well, do you know what? We're not far off the official Rotten Tomato um, ranking. And of course, Rotten Tomatoes is a website where basically you get loads and loads of reviews from film critics and average people out there as well. And it basically gives them like a percentage score. And yeah. of course, the higher the Rotten Tomatoes, the better. Um, so they've actually ranked it. So they're, they're in, in agreement with me, Con, where uh, number one is Shrek 2. Number yep. two is Shrek. But then they've got the other two the other way around. So number three is Shrek the third and number four is Shrek Forever After. Right, okay. Yeah, it's good. It's good. So they've gone for the same as you and I'm opposite Shrek one for me and then Shrek two, number two. It's good. Shrek is the best. Shrek is the best. And now it's time for the look forward. Now, this is the part of the pod where we pick our top five things that you need to be watching this week. Look forward. And my first pick this week is Minions and More Volume 2. That's available on Netflix to catch some animated shorts like Phil's Dance Party and Binky Nelson Unpacified in this awesome compilation from the company behind the Despicable Me franchise. Check it out on Netflix right now. And my first pick this week is actually Princess Mirabelle. Now, this is on iPlayer. And it is this awesome children's drama that is based on the books of Julia Donaldson. Now, it's all about a young girl called Ellen. And let's just say Ellen has a mischievous mirror double named Princess Mirabelle. Clever that, isn't it? Now, there's two seasons available to watch right now on iPlayer and you're going to love it. The next one for me is Aimbo, Spirit of the Amazon. That's available on Amazon Prime. So when an entrepreneur and his company threaten the land of Aimbo's tribe, the 13-year-old girl wishes to save her way of life, trying to reverse the damage along with some animal spirits. That's on Amazon Prime. It's great. Go check it out. It's available now. 
Now, my next pick is Puss in Boots, which might not actually come as much of a surprise as I've just said how much I love Puss in Boots. Now, this is actually on Netflix. Now, long before meeting Shrek, Puss in Boots has run out of time on suspicion of bank robbery, even though the real villain is Puss's friend, Humpty Dumpty. Though they still don't really get along, and Puss and Humpty reunite to steal a goose that lays golden eggs. Joining them for the adventure of nine lifetimes is notorious cat burglar Kitty Softpaws, of course it is. Now this is on Netflix to watch right now. And the final one for me is The Good Dinosaur. They're two words you never thought you'd put together. A good dinosaur. It's available on Disney+. Plus. A rainstorm separates Arlo and young dinosaur from his family. While travelling through a harsh landscape... He befriends Spot, a fell child, who helps him reunite with his family. You can catch Good Dinosaur on Disney+. Plus. And that is all we've got time for this week. A good one. It was a good one, and I really enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed it just as much as we did. And why not give us a little follow so you don't miss any future episodes. Oh, and don't forget, rate the podcast a little five stars. And if you want to get involved with episodes in the future, head on over to funkidslive.com forward slash stream it. That is our own page, all for stream it fun. And see how you can hear your voice on the pod. But that's it for today's episode and we'll see you next week. Yes, next week we're going to be exclusively speaking to Puss in Boots himself, Antonio Banderas. I can't wait. See you there. See you there. 